Welcome to another edition of Joe's Record Store. Um, this time, instead of pulling out LPs, cassettes, or CDs, uh, I decided to go more towards, uh, you know, memorabilia. Yeah, you can't put it in the CD player or the turntable. You know, you can't uh, listen to it digitally, but, uh, you know, it's just as much a part of... Uh, it's just as much a part of, you know, being a music fan than, you know, any piece of vinyl or, uh, you know, a guitar amplifier out there. And basically, it's just memorabilia. You know, I'm sure you, you know, going on the merchandise table and, you know, getting that 8x10 photo, you know, just to support the band or you want a memento of that show. Which, you know, I got a lot of mementos of shows and, uh... Well, I've finally successfully been able to have all my 8x10s framed. I was trying to get the slender ones and the, and the smaller ones for, uh, yeah, the slender ones, like I have one for my 8x10s my eight in with the slim posters, but it's in kind of hard to come by. So, uh, actually, I found a, another alternative. It was actually a cheaper alternative. Now I went to, you know, like a uh, dollar, like uh, bo um, bottom dollar, not bottom dollar, um, I went to dollar deals, and uh, there's another one, you know, family dollar, um, and, the, and they have, uh, you know, they have 8x10 frames real cheap, and I don't know, some I don't think they're measured accurately, some are kind of smaller than others, but, you know, I finally successfully... You know, have uh, had all my memorabilia framed, and you know, especially the eight by tens. And uh, so I'll just give you a little show and tell, like I usually do. This uh, this is ultimatum. I'm trying to angle it because the glare is horrible. So I don't think you want to look at my reflection. You want to look at the picture. But, um, you know, I got this in the mid '90s. I mean, I was just starting to uh, correspond with the band and. Uh, and at the time, you know, they just had the five-song uh, Fatal Delay tape. I still got it, and uh, I gave it a really honest review, but I don't think I was too harsh on them. But actually, you know, over time, this band has gotten better and better and better, you know. And, uh, this is a Texas band, Brutal Death Metal from the state of Texas. I mean, believe it or not... Texas is, I mean, as far as metal, Texas is like the unsung hero, even though, you know, L.A. and the, you know, northeastern part of the U.S. got a lot of the glory. I mean, Texas is definitely a hard and heavy metal state, you know. And some of those, you know, Texas cowboys and, you know, Midwest country boys, uh, I mean, they're your most devoted and most, you know, devout and most dedicated metal fans, you know, you'll ever have, and musicians, but, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, region's not everything, but, you know, Texas overall has always had a good music scene, you know, like, and um, this is Oblation, Brutal Death Metal, I have a couple demo tapes of them, and then I have a, I have a compilation CD, maybe I'll pull it out, it, it has all the, uh, on the Texas death metal bands that were under this management on really good and this one um, the same management Reese management disencumbrance real brutal death metal kind of like if you liked an in internal bleeding or suffocation you know, real thick guttural deep vocals um, they didn't really like handling their own correspondence, so they got Reese Management to do it. But, uh, I mean, just, uh, like Oblation, a brutal band, and, you know, maybe I'll dig the tapes out. I think it's been reissued on CD, but I'll, I'll find out later. Then they changed their name over time. Jesus Freaks. Um, I got this in 93 at the concert to support the bands uh, in uh, Virginia Beach. I was still in high school. It was my, I mean, it was really, uh, 
you know, before I, you know, left for the adult world, so to speak, uh, they were a five piece and then, you know, they, they trimmed down to a three piece, uh, um, really good thrash metal band, you know, like a lot of bands coming out of this, and they were part of the Sanctuary Ministry, too, um, and they're from Northern California, which is almost like another state in itself, but, uh, you know, real good, uh, just straightforward thrash, like, you know, the, basically, you know, they, they reflected the sound of what was happening in that era, you know, and, you know, I dug it because, you know, I, I was really into thrash metal, I still am, too, but, uh, Actually, they sounded better live, and I have a cassette of them called, uh, I have a six-song cassette EP, and then they got a CD, and it's all, I'll talk about later, um, but, uh, you know, I definitely have, you know, good memories of the show, it's really great to meet them, and hang out with them, and, and, uh, I'm not even gonna hang these up, because, uh, you know, um, yeah, because I'm going to be relocating to Panama, really, I'm just going to have these, you know, neatly uh, put away. And then when I, you know, get my new home in Central America, I'm going to put all these up. And these are cheap, you know, one dollar and dollar fifty frames, but uh, you know, it's still worth it, you know, just to preserve. This is Eternal Decision from Oklahoma. Um, the band Kling Recordings, or the label Kling Recordings, it kind of came and went in the '90s and early 2000s, but. I mean, they were really making an honest effort to, you know, stand up against the trend. You know, they weren't trying to, you know, go on to the alternative thing. I mean, they were they were still, you know, true to metal and real, you know, hardcore punk music. But uh, and aside from that, and uh, I, yeah, I used to get promo stuff from them left and right too, which is in my collection. Because, yeah, my, when I was paper pushing, I did a pretty fair review of this band. Um, a lot of people said they saw, this is Eternal Decision. The guy would wear, like, a half, like, makeup on stage, like, you know, half white, half black, and with question mark. Um, an Eternal Decision, real good, uh, just a straight-up thrash metal band, even though, you know, it was... Even though the thrash scene was pretty much well over by the time this came out, I mean, they were really good for their region, keeping metal alive. Um, when I wrote the review for this band, I, I said it sounded like uh, they kidnapped James Hetfield and didn't let him go until he finished the vocal tracks. And, uh, yeah, that's all I have to say, you know. Just good, old, fa good, straight-up American-style thrash metal. I mean, you know, heavily metallically influenced. You know, check it out online. Any of these bands that I'm, you know, waving in front of your face in the camera, waving in front of the camera, I mean, I strongly encourage you to, you know, check it out for yourself if you're curious. And I got such a high stack, I'm going to probably have to cut this in a couple segments. This is Modus Operanti. The, uh, this was a band formed by Biker James, a uh, bass player. Um, he was also in another band, like a Christian uh, Crusader punk rock band I liked a lot called uh, God Sent Humans. Uh, it was called, Give, I have their tape, Gimme Liberty, Gimme Death, and Re the Repent or Die demo, but uh, you know, that band was over and he started this one later in the 90s. Pretty much like punk thrash. And you know, again, you know, Biker James fashion, you know, very boldly evangelistic. I mean, if whether you like it or not, he's going to tell you 101 reasons why you need Jesus. You know, that kind of band. And yes, I mean, I'm, you know, I have no shame for, you know, my involvement with uh, <coughs> Christian heavy music. But, um, anyway, I'll put that down. Uh, Modus operandi. Brothers Keeper. Um, more like a positive, uh, Altern I guess you could throw them in the in the alternative category because this was out in the I got this in the 90s and all I really have from them is a seven inch and they did have a CD EP but I don't have that but I do have a, a seven inch of them that they put out on a um, SA Mob which is a hardcore label in Pennsylvania but um yeah you know, decent band I mean it's um. I don't really have a lot to say about them, but you know this is a good keepsake, and that's why it's framed. Uh, I'm gonna cut it here because it's starting to get long, and uh, so this will be part one, and then I'll do part two after this. <laughs> 